It is our bottom line segment, and we begin in the AFC. Peyton Manning returns for his 18th season. John Fox is out as head coach, and Gary Kubiak comes in to replace him. The Broncos won 12 games last year, but lost to the Colts in the divisional playoff. Will, what is the bottom line for the Broncos this year? The bottom line for the Denver Broncos is that they will miss the playoffs. What? That's correct. Say what? If you have no offensive line, you do not make the playoffs. I look at this offensive line, and let me just read these names to you. Uh, Tyler Simbrilo, okay, rookie, mm -hmm. tackle. Mm -hmm. Evan Mathis, just came over from the Eagles. Matt Paradis, uh, just in his second year. Luis Vasquez, all pro, mm -hmm. got one there. Yep. And Ryan Harris on, at the right tackle. That is five guys who I think I believe it to this point have not played together have not been on the field together, even through this exhibition season. A season, by the way, where Peyton Manning was sacked three times, straight up the middle. Now, Peyton Manning is notorious about getting that ball out in something like 2.6 seconds, but that's been a luxury. That's been sort of a, a superpower of his. This year, it's going to have to be a necessity. If that offensive line doesn't pull off a miracle and turn into a playoff caliber offensive line in that amount of time, after not having been, been together, in a division where everybody's better, Chiefs are better, I think, Raiders are better. Chargers are better. I see the Broncos ending up you something like nine and seven. You think those teams are all better than the Broncos? No, better than they were last year. Meaning oh, the, tougher they're getting outs better. For the Broncos. Okay, got it. Meaning you don't cruise to got it. eleven and five or twelve just and four. Just want to clarify, you, you were saying nine and seven mm -hmm. and miss the playoffs. The Raiders are better than the Broncos. Yeah. Just clarify. Yeah. Well, my bottom line for the Denver Broncos is, and I tried to apparently be a little more clever than you on this. Oh. the dying of the light. Okay. I just I'm with you on this in that they're trying to put this scheme in and all these pieces together to capitalize on the final years of who is an amazing, unbelievable QB, but with a lot of caveats right now. And you're talking about that old line, and we were just talking about this when you're doing zone blocking. Mm -hmm. A lot of times fans think like zones, whether in basketball or in football, mean that you can just plug and play, that it's easier. But a lot of times when you're doing zone stuff, it's like you gotta have, you gotta all be on the same brain wavelength when you're doing something like that. And that takes more time than the guys and the, the experience that they have on that O line. And also, when the Broncos did this back in the day in the late 90s with Shanahan, and they had the, the amazing running game, and then they had Elway, what really put them over the hump was that Elway was able to just throw his body anywhere there at the end of those two seasons. I don't think Peyton's gonna be able to do that. I don't think that's going to be able to happen for this team. And now I love that they have brought in this new scheme and they, they're doing everything they can this year to try and get the Broncos to the place that they think they can possibly be and squeeze the last amount of juice out of Peyton Manning. I just don't see it going that way for them. I think they're going to be really good through 10 games. And then I just don't think, I do think they're going to get into the playoffs. I think they're out after the first game. We agree. What do you think? I What's your quick hit bottom line? Fall. I think they're going to be all right. I think they're going to hand it off a little more, and that'll give Peyton a break. I think their defense still stacked. And, I mean, he talked about it on SportsCenter. Obviously, the line has questions, but there's still a mix of vets and youth. I think they're going to be okay. I think they're going to be okay, too. I think they're going to be 11 and 5. I just think, I don't think that gets them anywhere. I think 10 they're, six, I think they're going to the playoffs. I don't think that gets them anywhere once they're in the playoffs. We shall see, but we must move on. Sports happens. <laughs> Andrew, I, I love that. Andrew <laughs> Luck and the Colts have reached the playoffs in each of the first three seasons and reached the AFC title game last season. Luck adds weapons Frank Gore and Andre Johnson to the offense this season. So, Kate, what's the bottom line for the Colts? So close yet again. So close, but just not there. They're not there yet. And part of that is not even them and the Colts. I mean, they have added every piece, a lot of names you mentioned, that they can possibly make to get this team to the Super Bowl. I mean, Pagano even said that he thinks he's got more talent on this roster than he's ever had. But what's going to happen at the, the bottom line for the Colts here is who are they going to run into? More than likely, they're going to run into the Patriots again when you're talking about getting to the playoffs. I obviously think the Colts are going to be great during the regular season. I think they're going to get to the playoffs. I think they're going to be playing great football. It's a timing issue for Andrew Luck right now and the Colts and Pagano. They just have a few more years they need to wait before the Patriots are not the Patriots anymore and Tom Brady is not Tom Brady anymore. I don't think the Colts have gotten better enough to the point that they're going to be able to clear that hurdle. You say it depends on who they run into and what I would suggest is hopefully not somebody who can run the ball. I look at the Colts a little bit like I do the Eagles in the mm -hmm. NFC in that they're good 
They're going to make the playoffs, but they're overhyped. Everyone is on this bandwagon. And why wouldn't they be? Andrew Luck is great, and everyone is assuming Andrew Luck will take this to the next level. But football is still a team sport. And I watched last year as the Dallas Cowboys ran straight through the middle of the Colts' defense. Won that game 42-7. to Saw the Patriots beat the Colts 45-7. to Saw the Steelers put up 51 points against the Colts. I'm not worried about Andrew Luck's side of the ball. I'm worried about the other side of the ball. I know you get Robert Mathis back, but you got to stop the run. And right now, the Colts' defense would scare me if I was someone who was predicting them to go or to win the Super Bowl. They look like a good playoff team. Yeah, and that was their issue last year as well. Once you see them play the Patriots, it's like all confidence oh. goes oh. goes out oh. the door. Yeah, exactly. That's what you say if you're a Colts fan. You're like, oh, that's the comparison. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Let's move on to the Jets here, where it's already been an eventful camp for new head coach Todd Bowles. Geno Smith out with a broken jaw after taking that sucker punch during camp. The good news, however, Darrell Revis returns to anchor Gangrene's defense. Bottom line for the Jets here, Will. Bottom line for the Jets is Cardale Jones. They are in the Cardale Jones Bowl. Stop and it. And the only thing more absurd than predicting the college national champion today <laughs> and the record for everyone's NFL team.